the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Yes, this is the cutting edge on RFM with you on next Wednesday. You're listening to I Kong. Yes, I Kong, may I tell you, ghetto cry. Long time brethren from them longer I was there. I Kong. So much exciting things happen this week, yeah, boy. May I tell you. So much exciting things happen. But you know what I say? Well, I know this week, you know, today was Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, this week for you. But we we'll have the two policemen, them, hey. I tell you, you know, it's that domino thing, you know, where people sit on a car and I play domino. It's not a safe thing again, you know. I know the first time they shut up, man, where I play domino, you know, I'm telling you already, you know, say. You see, nowadays when you sit on and I play domino, you don't know the next man who you play domino with, who him above or who they with him or whatsoever, you know. So you have to watch who you play domino with nowadays. As a matter of fact, you could have, have a, you know, like when you go to a visa office. And him question you. For you and a man still gonna play that, you know, you have to go ask him, where my friend there, where my friend them name, what, what kind of business he mean, and all them something there, because this domino you know, thing up on the street side and up on the roadside, it a cause enough man to get injured and dead too. I don't know, I don't know as we are going, boy. May I tell you? Some simple little things now, in a drum you cannot see if again. Simple, simple little things. A pastime like Domino now. You have to go start watch. You could have to get all watchman when you play Domino nowadays. What a terrible thing. I come to zap the culture vulture. I am the culture vulture. I eat fufu rasta, suck them. All right. You know, so Lee Scratch Perry did have a... Well, for those of you who don't know him, did have a studio named Black Art Studio and... I'm just burn it down. <laughs> Think it's easy. Lee, Stra- Lee, Lee Scratch Perry. I was shooting in a Switzerland and he left a candle burning and it just burn down. Lee Scratch Perry. Two studio now. Lee Scratch Perry burn down in a whole age and I'm burn down in the next studio. Why oh, you love Lee Scratch Perry, you know? Yes. One of the great artists, them. Jamaican artist of our time, musician, composer, I mean, you name it. We want you love Lee Scratch Perry. All right. Now, this have to be the biggest mistake ever make for live TV. Yeah, man. You must hear about it already. It come like me late with all this story. Who I played for It has to be one of the biggest mistake ever make. I you know the thing about it? It's not the person who make the mistake, I'll feel it fine. Huh? It's the girl who name get Carl and them gear the sash and put her on the crown on her head. And she did have smile all over the place. I'll go for you, say. I know she. Me I tell you, Rasta. I feel it for her. I feel it for her. I really feel it for her. So here goes now. One of you is about to become our new Miss Universe. If for any reason she is unable to fulfill her duties, the first runner-up will take her place. Good luck to both of you. Miss Universe 2015 is...
I tell you after all of the Alabaloo there. The terrible part I come up now after all of the Alabaloo there. The terrible part. I tell you, man. It is it, distressing. The first runner up is Colombia. Continent with Monta Maruca. We are listening to the one of them. You know, here, continent. The end. The end. Miss Universe 2015 is Philippines. to go down as one of the biggest mix-up and bungalow for live TV. I tell you, I don't know if I have to live out. I wonder why. I tell you. <laughs> Can you imagine the millions of people I watch and them call out your name and them put on the crown for your head and you stand up there and smile with your teeth and my grin all over the place. Uncle Fear and the man come and say, Oh, I'm sorry. It is not you that win. <laughs> you want to the other lot that you know, the Miss Filipino man, you know. Shall try if you want this way, what the hell I go on around there, you know. Shall look left, look right, look center, look. Shall try if you want this way, I go on, but. But I may mean, tell you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for the data. I mean, I tell you, I'm sorry for you. I don't even know her, but I'm sorry for you. It don't even make no difference to me, but I'm sorry for you. <laughs> you know, after me don't watch that, I still go eat my dinner, but I'm sorry for you. I'm really sorry for you, Rasta. Mm. I don't know. And then Steve Harvey, I don't know if I'm going to live through that. I don't know how I'm going to live through that, boy. What a terrible mistake, that. A terrible mistake. How oh, could I make such a mistake? Anyway, click it. Love to the dance, that's still. Yeah, I love to the dance. Anyway, we really appreciate that still. We really appreciate that. Okay, here we go. Introduction to the next thing that we're going to play. This is the cutting edge and RFM. Serious thing. Here goes.
Christopher Columbus was not the first to discover the Americas, nor was he the first to realize that the Earth is round. He was the first, however, in other exploits, namely genocide and the transatlantic slave trade. In 1492, Columbus discovered the Americas when he landed in Haiti and several islands in the Caribbean. The Arawak Indians inhabited these islands. For the second voyage to Haiti, the following year, 1493, Ferdinand and Isabella gave him the resources needed to subdue the population. When he returned to Haiti, Columbus demanded food, gold, and cotton thread, and was increasingly met with resistance. This resistance gave him the opportunity he needed to declare war on the Arawaks. With 20 hunting dogs, horses, and guns, Columbus set upon the Arawaks, tearing them up with dogs and mowing them down with volleys of bullets and running them over with horses. Reporting back to Queen Isabel of Spain, Columbus boasted, In the name of the Holy Trinity, we can send from here all the slaves that Brazil will hold. The Spaniards hunted Indians for sport and murdered them for dog food. Columbus would reward his officers with women to rape. Girls 10 to 12 were especially desired for rape. Columbus and the Spanish won the war, and over 3 million Arawaks were killed in the genocide. They completely robbed the land of its gold. This is the truth about Columbus that's not recorded in your history books. On the other hand, most Americans know today is Columbus Day, at least in 47 states, although Hawaii has renamed it Discoverer's Day after the original Polynesians who populated that island thousands of years ago. South Dakota calls it Native American Day, and Alaska just ignores it like they kind of do everything. But what we're really celebrating today is Taino Genocide Day. The day when Christopher Columbus began to wipe out an entire indigenous population in a way that would even make Pol Pot blush. In 1492, Columbus was on a manic hunt for gold when he set sail and eventually landed on a small island off the coast of North and South America, an island today named Hispaniola, which is split between the nations of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. As Columbus wrote in a letter to the King and Queen of Spain, Gold is most excellent. Gold constitutes treasure. And he who has it does all he wants in the world and can even lift souls up to paradise. But when he landed in what he called the New World, there wasn't much gold to be found. But he did find something he thought was just as good as gold. People who, in Columbus's mind, would make great slaves. So he wrote to the Spanish monarchs. They are well built, with good bodies and handsome features. They do not bear arms and do not know them, for I showed them a sword, and they took it by the edge and cut themselves out of ignorance. They have no iron. Their spears are made of cane. They would make fine servants. With 50 men, we could subject them all and make them do whatever we want. And here there are so many of these slaves. Although they are living things, they are as good as gold. What Columbus did to the island and the tragedy he brought to the native population there has been largely erased by time and replaced by a glorified story of a bold explorer, explorer who set out to change the planet. In reality, though, as a result of what we've learned from writings by Christopher Columbus's own men, he raped, pillaged, enslaved, and slaughtered people just to get rich. Not exactly the type of guy worthy of a Main Street parade. One of Columbus's crewmen, Miguel Sueno, or Cueno, excuse me, uh, described the scene when Columbus first arrived in Hispaniola for the second time, and thousands of Tainos, or what were referred to as Indians, came out to greet the ships. Cueno wrote, When our caravels were to leave for Spain, we gathered 1,600 male and female persons of these Indians. For those who remained, we let it be known to the Spaniards in the vicinity that anyone who wanted to take some of them could do so to the amount desired, which was done. Cueno went on to write that he took his own sex slave, a beautiful teenage girl who, in his words, quote, resisted with all her strength, quote, end quote, leaving him no other choice but to, quote, thrash her mercilessly and rape her, end quote. And when Columbus's men did good work, Columbus routinely presented them with their very own sex slaves. But that was just the beginning. Columbus eventually started up a global sex, child sex slave trade, exporting Indians all around the world, as he bragged to a friend in a letter written in 1500. 
A hundred Castellanos, is a Spanish coin, are as easily obtained for a woman as for a farm. And it is very general, and there are plenty of dealers who go about looking for girls. Those from 9 to 10 years old are now in demand. Eventually, under Columbus's orders, life for the Taino on their homeland of Hispaniola became so bad that they resorted to mass suicide. As the Spanish missionary Pedro Cordoba noted in 1517, 25 years after Columbus arrived, as a result of the sufferings and hard labor they endured, the Indians choose and have chosen suicide. Occasionally, a hundred have committed mass suicide. The women, exhausted by labor, have shunned conception and childbirth. Many, when pregnant, have taken something to abort and have aborted. Others, after delivery, have killed their children with their own hands so as not to leave them in such oppressive slavery. By the time Cordoba wrote those words, the indigenous population on Hispaniola had plummeted from roughly 3 million people before Columbus arrived to only 12,000 25 years later. A few decades after that, not one Taino was left on the island. An entire culture and people completely wiped off the map and largely forgotten thanks to Christopher Columbus. Happy Taino Genocide Day. Ari FM. Thought smoking. Lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. Teaching a lot of the lies that has been perpetuated by European scholars and writers. And we have done so much studies and so much investigation to find out that a lot of the things them that we were taught in school. And so it go. Now instead of introducing our new found information and new factual information, we feel like say we just nonchalant, we just go about where we didn't know already. Or where we didn't think we know. How can a people gather information that has been tested and proven to be fact, to be true? And continue down the same road, the same line road. For years and years and years and keep teaching our children, children, children the same lies that has been perpetuated for centuries. It's time we stop it. It's time we rewrite the history of indigenous people. And what was done to them. You know there's an African proverb that say. When the hunter. Kill. The lion. Is seen as a. Just a hunter. When the lion kill the hunter, the lion is seen as a savage beast. Can you imagine when the lion start to tell his own story? Because the hunter encroach up and is in habitat. With a gun, him come. Trying to make a trophy of the lion. And so many lions were killed. And the hunter was praised for his trophies. But when one lion decide that him not take no more, him going to kill the hunter, the lion is seen as a savage beast. What a day when the lion write the moon story. We should have started right our own story. Because most of the things them that them tell we is them make it up. Or them make it up. And even them themselves, they are people who are sympathetic and know 
that what they were taught in history books in Europe, after they themselves start to investigate, them realize about no, 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 go so. And if you should look at all the movies that was made as it relates to non white people, you will see that most of the depiction of these non white people is either they are stupid or they are savages. Yes. If you look at the movies that was made, even at the black and white movie days, when they would, when, when they never have color, most of these movies depict people of color as they are called, as either savages or just plain downright stupid. Children in the United States learned that Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492. But since there were already millions of people living on the American continents when he arrived, what is Columbus's real importance in history? This video will show what really happened during his voyages between two worlds and how they helped shape the world we know today. In 1451, Columbus was born in the Republic of Genoa. There he began his sailing career, but in 1477 he was hired as a merchant mariner for King John II of Portugal. Portugal was gaining power on the seas, colonizing Atlantic islands and establishing trade with African kingdoms. By the 1480s, they found out the Indian Ocean was on the other side of Africa. This discovery gave them a fast and cheap trade route to the rich goods of Asia. During Portugal's rise in power, a group of European scholars thought the Earth was smaller than what was previously believed. This meant one could reach Asia by sailing west. Because of the newly invented printing press, Columbus read about these recent theories and was enthralled with the idea of sailing west for riches. He tried to get funding for an expedition from Portugal, but King John didn't believe in the small earth theory. He then tried in France, England, and Spain with no luck until 1492 when the Spanish sovereigns, Ferdinand and Isabella, decided to help fund three ships for a voyage. They saw Columbus as a means to compete against Portugal's success. The Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria set sail on August 3, 1492. After a stop on Grand Canary, the rest of the trip took five weeks. On October 12th, land was spotted. It was an island, and at dawn, Columbus went ashore. Because he believed in the small earth theory, Columbus thought he was near Japan. He called the natives of this island Indians because India was what many Europeans called Asia at the time. But the natives were really called the Taino. Trade began between the two parties, but it was clear that the Taino did not possess the fabled riches of East Asia. However, some of them wore gold as jewelry. Columbus was hungry for gold to bring back to Spain. He wandered around searching for a large amount of gold until the Santa Maria crashed into a reef on Hispaniola. Columbus left 39 men at the site to build a colony. He promised he would return for them and sailed back to Spain. When he arrived in Europe, Columbus was famous. He had sailed into the unknown and returned to tell the tale. He brought back many things to show the Spanish king and queen, including Tainos he had kidnapped. But he did not bring enough gold, so Ferdinand and Isabella equipped Columbus with 17 ships for a second voyage and named him governor of all the lands he discovered. Columbus was an excellent sailor. He found his way back to Hispaniola using his own key navigation skills and kept the coordinates of his route a secret. When the fleet arrived at Hispaniola, they found out that the 39 men who were left there to build a colony had been killed by a local chief. They also found out the same chief had lots of gold on his land. Columbus led a crew into his territory and found a gold quarry. The chief was angered by the arrogance of these invaders, and soon fighting broke out. To intimidate the chief, Columbus captured three of his captains and beheaded them in public. This enraged the Tainos and disturbed many of the Spanish. To make things worse, there was soon no gold left to mine. Columbus sent letters back to Spain on a ship and exaggerated the amount of gold that was found. To produce more profit for the king and queen, Columbus suggested starting a slave trade. Without waiting for a response, he seized over 500 natives and sent them to Spain. Most of the remaining natives fought against this injustice, so Columbus unleashed terror on them. Once defeated, they were forced to pay tributes of gold to the Spanish. It was worse than slavery. People who didn't find enough were punished brutally. Forced to constantly look for gold, 
The Taino could not farm their lands anymore. Many escaped into the hills, only to be hunted down. During the first few years of the tribute system, 50,000 natives died. Columbus's brutal command made him enemies in the colony as well as in Europe. In 1496, he sailed for Spain to defend his actions to Ferdinand and Isabella. He left his brother Bartolomeo in charge of the colony until he returned. The king and queen listened to his defense and allowed him to return to Hispaniola in 1498. By now, the colony was a disaster. Bartolomeo was just as bad at governing as his brother was, if not worse. A rebellion had begun among the Spanish, and soon the king and queen sent a royal investigator to assess the situation. He put the Columbus brothers on trial. They were found guilty of numerous crimes against both the Spanish and the natives. The brothers were arrested and sent back to Spain. Christopher Columbus was no longer in charge of the New World. Now old and humbled, he was allowed one last voyage across the ocean, but he was not permitted to return to Hispaniola. He explored the Caribbean for two years before sailing back to Spain, where he died in 1506. We have learned that Columbus was ambitious, intelligent, and courageous, but he was no hero. His exploits in the colony were disasters for the native inhabitants, and their way of life was destroyed by his actions as governor. But his efforts led Europe to dominate the world through colonization and the expansion of kingdoms into empires. If Columbus did not succeed, someone else would have. But since his journey was the first to establish a link between the old world and the new, his name is remembered. Rapid True Value makes the holidays even merrier with a massive holiday blowout special like never before. Bogus sale on 100 white lead string lights. Get 50% off select holiday decorations. The great wow tag gives you up to 70% off wow items and 10% off all bedding and other catalog selections. Hurry now to your nearest Rapid True Value. Conditions apply. We can turn any occasion into a party. From a promotion to a holiday to just another Saturday. We know how to rave in style. We always make sure to drink right. So I make sure to eat before I drink. Bring my ID so I can get a drink. I drink water in between my drinks. I definitely don't drive after I drink. So join the movement. To the time of our life. I pledge to drink right. Right age, right right amount, right weight. And those yeah, would I really take a stack of them two little clip there. And go find them, what them call it, tablet. And find some more information about Christopher Columbus. Because it's not the same thing them a teach at school. Same old fool fool thing them a teach at school. You know, when I used to go to school, I never know, I never know, say, have a name named Tai, you know. And since me big, I mean, know about Tai, you know, you know. Ahara, what me used to say, you know. Arawak Indian at that, you know, the craziness of it. Anyway, the European invaders go. Them call the people them Indian. Because Christopher Columbus actually wanted to reach to India. And when he reached China, he think he was on the west coast of India. Call it the west of India. Thus, we, who do have nothing to do with India, is called West India. Now we, we grab it up too. I will teach the children them that you're a West, you're from the West Indies, you're a West Indian. And I hope you get to go to the University of the West Indies. Tell the same picnic say them African, that's what them do. Tell the same picnic say, you know, say it's Africa. Me? Me I'm not Africa, me never go to Africa yet. <laughs> Boy, you're a West Indian and you never been to India. You never been to East Indian, West Indian, North of India, or South of India. But you appreciate it when people say you're a West Indian. These are the things them that they keep regurgitating, regurgitating. And we don't have no sense for vomit it out. We need to vomit out all of these craziness. Or we reject being African. But we don't reject being West Indian. There's something intrinsically wrong with the education that them give we. For we reject ourselves so much. And grab up something that we are not. I don't know Indian. I don't come from the west of India. Christopher Columbus make a mistake. Oh, we know said the man make a mistake. For so much years now. I will still perpetuate this propaganda for our children and the children that follow the children. It's a terrible thing. The thing that we should have hung up now with scorn. 
You hear people that say, me never go to Africa yet. Me not Africa. And how the hell that, how, 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 how that comes up? How, 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 how so fool fool? You never go to Africa yet. Say, I'm not African. Because you never born in Africa. You're not an African. The way they're supposed to call born in a pig pen. Suppose a cow born in a pig pen, what it means? Him still a cow, him no matter where the cow born, I don't move my cow. I don't swear it go. So it no matter where the cow born, could have born in a Jubilee Hospital. Still a cow. Could have born in a Clinton Ferguson, Fenton Ferguson backyard. Him is still a cow. So me no know Always so tough. Everybody can identify them heritage. Heritage we are talking about now. Because them give we Jamaican like it's a heritage. You know, Jamaica have culture. We are, we develop a Jamaican cultural expression here, but our heritage is Africa. We have an African heritage, just like all the Chinese, them have heritage. Them not left out them heritage. Heritage connected to land. Original land. Your ancestral land. What them have we? So 500 years of Columbus. You know something? You go to my bed, I have nightmare about Columbus. I think about Columbus till I get up and write poem about Columbus. And what Columbus said to me in a dream. So I want to play this poem here when I write. Years ago. Both me and Columbus I discuss and Columbus are tell me these things. I make sure I write it down.
provoking, always smoking. Lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. This is the cutting edge on RFM. You know, they bring him pan for them thing now and he might talk about where did I say? Because you know where did I say it's very, according to them, very controversial if you're a white man I say these things. So it would create a lot of stir. I don't know how much people did see it, but I want to play it. There's a man named Tim Wise. Listen to what I say. Here's the reality. The image of a white Jesus has been used to justify enslavement, conquest, colonialism, the genocide of indigenous peoples. There are literally millions of human beings whose lives have been snuffed out by people who conquered under the banner of a white God. That is a far more significant problem than whether a black writer in 2013 suggests somewhat humorously, but perhaps seriously, that we should change Santa to a penguin. No one's going to die because of that iconography. The white Jesus, white God imagery has literally resulted in death. That's Sam. something folks ought to deal with. What Megyn Kelly said was very simply, quote, Santa is white, end of quote, and so is Jesus. So I think the real issue is, you know, if you want to make a joke about Santa's whiteness, here's a way to do it that would not presume white normalcy or that white is the norm. You could say, for instance, and I would, that if there were Santa, he'd have to be white because no black man could break into millions of homes, even if he was bearing presents, and not be shot by some neighborhood watch captain. That's a way to be funny, but Fox News would never do that because that would presume that they had to admit racial profiling and racism were real. So there's that. I think the real issue is that she made a statement of fact, not for her own opinion, but fact. There's a difference between believing in Santa and believing in Jesus or the Buddha. Buddha did not come from Kansas. Jesus was not born in a manger in central Pennsylvania. He was a man of color. And the fact that we have represented him for centuries, literally as a white man, speaks to the entire history of white supremacy. We can act like it didn't happen. We can make it the punchline of a joke, but the reality is this iconography, Jesus more so than Santa, I agree with Mel here, Jesus more so than Santa is a real problem. There's a reason we've represented these okay. icons as white. It's not a coincidence that we've done that. Okay. Do you think there's something inherently wrong? I understand well, you saying that a white Jesus has been used so. to, to, to do horrible things, but here's, here's the, the difference. difference. Reza, okay. Reza is right. Now, Reza's right, but the difference is that the power of others to make Jesus or to make Christ as they view him has never come, come close to the power of the European power to make Jesus white. In other words, black folks can think Jesus is black and view Christ as black, but at the end of the day, the image that has been used to dominate Christianity in this world and on this planet is the white image. So therefore, you can believe, you, you can think Jesus looks like whatever you want or that Christ looks like whatever you want. Ultimately, though, there is such a thing as power and it's not equitable and so if certain people have been able to impose their image of the Christ of the Savior on others or God or Adam and Eve the first human beings ostensibly as white people to believe that that doesn't have an effect is to believe that advertising doesn't have an effect it's to okay. believe that companies that spend billions of dollars don't actually sell you stuff based on the images they use which is nonsense REFM thought provoking always smoking I think they again, you know. I don't know how much people did see it. I don't know how much people did see it, but I know say a lot of people never see it. Is that this brother named Tim Wise did an interview on Fox, and then because of him say it come over to CNN. So we get it from CNN. So we want to play it again because it's a serious thing. A very, very serious thing. This is things where we have for years now, but it just has come to the fore now. A whole heap of things. A whole heap of things just have come to the fore. So that's why we now stop saying what we are saying now. We now stop saying what we are saying. Believe you me, we're not stopping saying what we are saying because this is from CNN now. White people have to confront this issue. White people have to confront this issue now. And black people have to go take a stock. Take a stock. 
image of a white Jesus has been used to justify enslavement, conquest, colonialism, the genocide of indigenous peoples. There are literally millions of human beings whose lives have been snuffed out by people who conquered under the banner of a white god. That is a far more significant problem than whether a black writer in 2013 suggests somewhat humorously, but perhaps seriously, that we should change Santa to a ping. No one's going to die because of that iconography. The white Jesus, white God imagery has literally resulted in death. That's Sam. something folks ought to deal with. What Megyn Kelly said was very simply, quote, Santa is white, end of quote, and so is Jesus. So I think the real issue is, you know, if you want to make a joke about Santa's whiteness, here's a way to do it that would not presume white normals here, that white is the norm. You could say, for instance, and I would, that if there were Santa, he'd have to be white because no black man could break into millions of homes, even if he was bearing presents, and not be shot by some neighborhood watch captain. That's a way to be funny, but Fox News would never do that because that would presume that they had to admit racial profiling and racism were real. So there's that. I think the real issue is that she made a statement of fact, not for her own opinion, but fact. There's a difference between believing in Santa and believing in Jesus or the Buddha. Buddha did not come from Kansas. Jesus was not born in a manger in central Pennsylvania. He was a man of color, and the fact that we have represented him for centuries, literally, as a white man, speaks to the entire history of white supremacy. We can act like it didn't happen. We can make it the punchline of a joke. But the reality is this iconography, Jesus more so than Santa, I agree with Mel here, Jesus more so than Santa is a real problem. There's a reason we've represented these okay. icons as white. It's not a coincidence that we've done that. Okay. Do you think there's something inherently wrong? I understand well, here, you're saying that a white Jesus has been used so. to, to, to do horrible things. But here's, here's the difference. And Reza, okay. Reza is right. Now, Rez is right, but the difference is that the power of others to make Jesus or to make Christ as they view him has never come close to the power of the European power to make Jesus white. In other words, black folks can think Jesus is black and view Christ as black, but at the end of the day, the image that has been used to dominate Christianity in this world and on this planet is the white image. So therefore, you can believe, you, you can think Jesus looks like whatever you want or that Christ looks like whatever you want. Ultimately, though, there is such a thing as power and it's not equitable. And so if certain people have been able to impose their image of the Christ, of the Savior on others, or God, or Adam and Eve, the first human beings ostensibly as white people to believe that that doesn't have an effect is to believe that advertising doesn't have an effect it's to okay. believe that companies that spend billions of dollars don't actually sell you stuff based on the images they use which is nonsense Ari FM thought provoking always smoking lyrics like a bazooka you are listening to Muta Baruka all I got in my ticket not revelation you say information and Oh, information empower people. It inspires. Information inspires you. And the lack of information lead to superstition. The lack of information lead to superstition. So when people say they are inspired without information, it's superstition them them turn to. This is the age of information, and if we don't grasp. The understanding and the things that is in front of us right now that is real, that is facts. Can you see what that man say? If you are a normal person, you should just know automatically. But because it's so embedded inside our way, it's very difficult to talk to black people. Black people may I deal with now. It's very difficult to talk to black people about things of this nature. Because it totally makes a difference to them. If you know them nothing about it, make a difference in them life and how them view and them perception of life. Some people are so so seriously embedded in the, the, the European understanding and idea of them religious belief. That is it, 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 it's like it's, it's like you're a criminal if you show them something else. And now the people who gave up this idea is now saying, but look ya, make we stop and think about this thing, you know. It affect weed too, you know. White supremacy don't affect black people, it affect white people. And if we continue and continue night, and we keep doing the same thing the same way all the while. 
expecting a different result. It's not what happened. And in all sphere of life, all aspects of life, you have a man named Neely Fuller. He talk about the 10 different things that bring about this strength, this power of white supremacy. 10 different things. He mentioned education. He, make, he mentioned sex. Economy. Politics. So much of them. And if we don't confront them, if we don't confront them, really, we have to go anywhere like racism. You see, in America, because they never deal with racism on a level openly, on them television and on them talk shows. You see, since Obama, racism has gone, racist attack. Not even with the racist attack has gone up many folds since Obama is president. This is him, this next year, them eight year, I think. Racism, racist attack has gone up many, many, many folds. Them refuse to men talk about it. Them refuse to confront it. People say, oh, well, you know. You know what I mean? Like black, white, you know, no, there's, there's no difference in color. I think that the color, this or no color, that we're all one and we're all human beings and all these things. And if you look at the disparity between the different races, how can we keep saying that? His Majesty, give us a warning, you know. His Majesty, give us a warning, and Brian, if you have to give us a warning, for instance, say, until, and we keep repeating it, you know, we keep repeating it. It's my to say, until the philosophy that all one race superior and another inferior, which is a serious thing. Guys, my just, you know, those settings, you know, him choosing words, you know, him say, until the philosophy, the philosophy that all one race superior and the other inferior. What is that philosophy? We have to examine that philosophy. We have to examine that philosophy. Because you see what happened now? You have African people, black people. Of course now, when them hear people like all me are defend Africa now, them say, oh no, if we are Africa, oh no, they run up and down near kids see me. If we yeah, that is what they might think. You have black people who think that. If we did Africa would have run up and down me, you can see me. I mean, really. If we know, sister, there's a philosophy that all one race superior and the other inferior, then we're blind. If we think that we can't pass the hurdle there already, we, 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 we are we are pushing our head in the, 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 the sun. And feel said the whole body get eyed like the ostrich. Push him neck in the, the sun and feel said he's eyed. He's not eyed. The whole line body out of the angle made in the sun. And that is where we reach we. Because we don't understand that there is something out there that is numbing us, binding us. That even though individuals might sometimes look like them progressing, but as a group, as a nation, as a body of people, we still they are the bottom of the ladder. As a body of people, we still don't listen. And we can't wake up. Because we feel so we not sleep and we get so complacent and passive. And we get so blissful in our ignorance that we just accept the things them someone come and show you say but watch you now all right look, look how look how christmas come now you realize say santa claus get more promotion now than jesus christ check it check all the people them look on the road with them red and white at like idiot 
black people are walk around the place with this little dunce hat hang over them neck. I wish I'm go today. I, I told them I go, where well, am I go? Some of go. And this is like a, this is like a official office. <laughs> and the girl in a nice suit. And pan her head with this red and white hat. This red and white clad something. I mean, I say, what look you know? How them get to do that? How them get to if do that? How them get to represent part of them story that them conjure up and make up in a Europe and make it filter down into some people that has nothing to do, no no relationship with nothing where them are dealing with, where them are saying. How does it know that Santa Claus takes center stage in a Christmas than Jesus Christ? Because we please say our Jesus Christ was the center of this thing, yeah? But not at all the things that we see all over the place are float all over the place. We not say no, no, nothing. In relationship to all the people that move, be I think it's, it's parties and fashion and shows and dead and rail and rail and rail and all these things. Santa Claus. One company had to bring Santa Claus. <laughs> ah, no, we are telling you, Rasta. We are telling you. Mm, 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 mm. It's rough. Room or room in, in terms of our religious belief, most of us religious belief is gotten from Rome, especially the Roman Catholic Church, the systematic manipulation of other people's culture and belief system has brought us to this point in history where we cannot decipher nor separate what is true from what is false because they are so intertwined. The lie and the truth is so intertwined that whosoever control the printing press and the airwaves control what we believe in our and what we think. So when we get documents that is handed down way back 500 years, 700 years, even a thousand years and beyond, a lot of these documents were placed in our hands by people who have their political agenda to keep themselves and their kind in power. And you know, as we always say, power corrupt and absolute power corrupt absolutely. So, when Rome decided that they would take over this idea from the so-called Jews, this idea of messiahship and how they view messiahship in relationship to the Jews view messiahship we realize that what we got that is now called Christianity was manipulated by the Romans because there was never any Christians during the time of this man that they call Yeshua. Well, the Jews them call Yeshua, but them call Jesus Christ. Is the English version is the English version of a Greek word. Jesus Christ is the Greek is the English version of the Greek. Jesus Christos. Jesus Savior, Christ Messiah. That's what it means. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus, the word Jesus means Savior and Christ means Messiah. And the the the, 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 the the Greek translation is Jesus Christus. So during Jesus Christus there was no Jesus Christ. 
until the English come and translate that word. But in the Hebrew word, them have a thing named Yahshua. Yahshua. That was a common name in, 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 in what it's called Palestine at the time. And Messiah was not an individual Messiah. Even David was seen as the Messiah. David, the so-called king of, of, of Israel, was called the Messiah. And there were many people who the so-called Jews were looking for at the time to save them from a political institution that the government of the time was Rome, the Roman institution was controlling and manipulating where the so-called Jews live in Palestine, now called Israel. And so we have that there was no Christians 2,000 years ago walking up and down in Palestine. These people were not called Christian. The, 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 the term Christians come out of Rome and the following thinking and ideas came out of Rome. What they did was to manipulate because these people who them talk about in Israel, these, these, these so-called Jews, was fighting against the Romans because the Romans destroyed them temple and destroy everything that was Jewish. And take a whole heap of them artifacts. Just like the normal Europeans do all the while when they go into other people's land. They take away the artifacts, take away the books, carry it go to Europe, transform it, twist it round, turn it round, and make it become their thing. For centuries they have been doing that. Even before 2000 years, they have Alexander, the, the so called Greek, who went into these places. Go into all Egypt, take out all of the book them, carry them, go to Greece, and then develop certain things. And then them here say philosophy started in Greece and mathematics and all these things in Greece. Well, what happened is that these people was fighting, fighting against Rome. Them call themselves zealot. Well, none of them call themselves zealot. I, 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 I. People call them zealots. The, the zealots was some serious, a killer whole heap of Roman for, for, for maintaining them, them, them Judaism, them Jewish traditions. And the army of Rome was sent against them. Now, why we are bring up that, you know, is because they said is that we have succumbed to the idea that the New Testament, the New Testament as seen by the Christian mind was from some people in a Palestine, in a Israel. But on further investigation and information, we realize that when you look upon all them Structured. For instance, the, the, the Gospels are called into what they call Gospels. Nobody don't know who write them. Them put some name on it, name Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but nobody don't know if it's for fact that it's some man named Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And as a matter of fact, when you really check it, and people don't like it when we talk them here, you know, but it's serious and very important in the scheme of things and how we now view ourselves as a people. And if a man give you a book and him tell you, say, some man we used to follow a man named Jesus Christ write the book, like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, the first time the, the New Testament was written, it was written in Greek. Now, unless you're a highly educated Jew, you don't know Greek. It's like, uh, uh, for instance, no. When I that, when I used to go to school, and Sunday school, them tell me, say, is, the, is, is Matthew who was one of the disciples of Jesus 
right Matthew. And for years we have gone and gone with that information say the macho who follow Jesus are him right macho. And the fisherman, I remember say, I appeared ghetto people, Jesus used to work with, you know, I can't tell them a show, you know. And on some educated man, you know. And some normal fisherman, beggar man and all, thief, Jesus used to spar with. Because them man, they decide to them, I go, pick up arms against Rome and just take back them land and take back them culture, including the man with them I call Jesus. So them call him revolutionary. It was no pacifist. It was not some little man with us, you know, turn out a cheek and this and this and that. Them now follow them thing there, you know. And some man will take up arms and take up sword and take them fuck and this and hijack and shoot and kill Romans if you take back their land. Them not have no education like how you don't hear all certain people at all. So when me I say this one, me I say, if some normal man used to follow Jesus who wasn't so really educated, like some fisherman, where the hell this man know Greek from? If you go write a book in Greek. You know, see that sound kinda weird. It's like it's like you go down a Greenwich farm one Sunday now and you meet all the fishermen. You think any of them fishermen they know French? Half knows even Spanish. Them not come in contact with no Spaniard, them not come in contact with no Frenchman. Unless them really did have the opportunity to go away and come back. But you go down and you go down and get to the people, you know, normal people in a Jamaica don't know French. You have to go to school to learn that. These people who used to follow this man according to how they write it. And some normal everyday people where they have fish and fish and fish and fish and all them really. The, 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 the language of these people is a language named Aramaic. Not supposed, not supposed, you're not supposed to mix it up with Amharic, Aramaic. Aramaic is the language that was spoken at the time. These people never know Greek. Yet see them tell me, say, the first time anything written in a New Testament was written in Greek. Then if these people were normal fishermen and things, where the hell them learn Greek from? They never know Greek. So it's much other people write it. That's the first sign. That is the first sign of the lie. No man who was following anybody 2,000 years ago write anything we call Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That is the first thing because most of the information that we get come out of them four books there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That is the first thing. So the question is who write them? Who write this book? That is the question, but nobody now got asked it because we're so deep into it. And if me go start telling you now, say, as some Roman write it, you go hear me, I'm going to get them fools there from. If me start telling you, say, why some Roman people write that to give me? Because they want to pacify the revolution against the Jews, them. I mean, the Jews, them, are fight against them, they want to pacify. So what them do is configure it. Jewish culture and design it into some Roman philosophy and give it and call it Christian Christianity. I've been here all day of my life. Work student queer I be on Brothers and sisters, this is John. Join us with respect for our national anthem. Let us stand and defend this one. Peace and love. Thank you. Eternal Bless our land, oh, guide us with thy mighty hand, keep us free from evil powers, do what our life through countless hours, to our leaders, great
Yeah, so me that talk about how the configuration of where we now have was configured by the Romans and then it, them use the Roman Catholic Church to perpetuate the dogma that people actually believe sincerely believe though we don't believe in her but without investigation you know come to the truth the truth is that nobody know who write Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and these are the four books that elevate well I shouldn't say the four books because Paul is the man who Christians based them foundation after. Even though Paul himself admits he never knew the man who named Jesus. Why we are bring up this is in light of how we say they move Jesus out of Christmas and put Santa Claus there. And most people now celebrate Santa Claus. And if you look on all the people them dress, if you look on all the people them on the road where I sell, all of them have on a little Santa hat. All of the bank, me see it. And the Christmas tree is a thing. Now, me tell you about all the man them, including the man where they call Yahshua and Jesus, whatsoever they want to call him. The man they did a fight for maintaining them culture and maintain them country, them land. And Rome come in there and march down the city, tear down the city, and kill off a whole heap of them, even though after that, them still did have some little speckles of man who decides them not give up and still did have kill certain Roman. What the man them do is use the, the Jewish ideas and thinking and carry it to Rome. Now, I want you to go to some investigation and now because I, I, I never got to talk about this the whole night just now. There's a man named Josephus. I don't know if you pronounce it, you know, Josephus. Josephus. <laughs> Josephus. Yes, Josephus. Now, you know, says only in the Bible you hear anything about Jesus Christ. There's no other way where no other way Jesus Christ mentioned except this man when named Josephus. But here was the thing with Josephus now. Josephus was a Jew, you know, but he was also a Roman. Or we get that? Just like Paul. Paul was a Jew, but he also was a Roman. He was a Roman citizen. But the thing with Josephus is that and you can't go you can't go look for him, you know, J, I think a J O S E P H U S Josephus. The thing with Josephus as opposed to all Paul and them people there, you know, that Joseph was, was, was a man who be, was so entwined with Roman, the Roman ways, that the emperor at the time accept him in as one of the family. Because him start to give the, the Jew, the, the, the man, the, the Jews them, him own, him own people them who used to have fight against the Romans, which was the Jews. Him as a, 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 a what do you call him? Pharisees. He'd have the Sadducees and the Pharisees. He was a Pharisee. Him who was 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 one of them man who was supposed to have fight against the Roman Empire. Him sell out the the, the Jews them and start to come for the Roman them to the point where them give him a name. And this is where you want to find out. No, no, the Flavians. F L A V I A N S Flavians. I don't even know if I spell it right neither, you know, can I talk from no paper yet so now to made it come. Everything. And why you go investigate a family named the Flavians? Because the emperor who did wipe out, who did overcome the 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 lay waste the the the, the temple them. The temples in a Jerusalem was that was that emperor named Titus, T-I-T-U-S. Titus Flavian. Or Flavian Titus. And that family, that Flavian family, 
including which was before Constantine, because Constantine was part of that family too. He was Flavian Constantine. The same Constantine that called up all of the bishop them and tell them, say, look here, we have to come to a decision about how we are going to go forward with this thing about them called Christianity. You know? We have to make a decision. He was part of that, 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 that family, Emperor Constantine. So, I want you to look that evil Josephus, this, 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 this Jew, was engraved into the family, the Flavian family. And him was a well-educated person. Him was a man who could have write in a Greek and write in a own language or a make and all these things. But here the thing now, there's no other way out of the Bible except for this man named Josephus that this man named Jesus Christ come up in now. But guess what now? This man was so conniving and so backbiting with them people them that people say I know him actually write that them like them put in the part it looks like how them put in the last part of Mark. The original Mark never have the last chapter of the night, the last verse of the night and them, them add that in there in a later date. People are say this man ya him sell out the Jew them so much and go up on the side of the Roman them that him become no family them call him Flavian Flavian Josephus or Josephus Flavian I don't know which part them put the name it has the last or first but there was a family and Titus was made as this Titus father was made a god because I know the Caesars them used to call him made, made him god Julius Caesar was known as a god, and Julius Caesar was long before Jesus Christ. That is in the BC, before the common era, BCE. You did have Julius Caesar, but Julia, I make a can name alpha. And then after Julius Caesar, you have Augustus Caesar, where August come alpha. And then you have a next Caesar named Caligula. Terrible, terrible emperor that. Terrible emperor, Caligula. And then you have and then Claudius, I think Claudius was in at the time now when they were talking about Jesus. And then you have Titus. Titus. Titus was the man, the terrible man now. But Titus did have a father. Why I give thanks to my mother. Believe you me. Oh, my mother, my mother, my mother, my mother dead. I went my mother dead. April, yes, my mother dead. April. When I talk them things, I remember my mother so much. Believe you me, you did have um, you did have Titus, Titus, Emperor Titus, and him father, because Julius Caesar demand that him be worshipped as a deity, you know. Yes, I saw the, I saw the, the idea of emperors being God. It's not, a, it's not Rasta bring up that, you know. When you hear Isis, Rasta say Isis that is God, you know. It's not, it's not the first time that ever come in our history, you know. The pharaohs in Egypt was recognized, you know, as God, you know. Them say, elect of God. That means when the pharaoh please the people, them, he's elevated to a deity. The thing with the Romans, them know, is that the people, them don't elevate them to deity, you know. They make themselves become deities. They demand that the people worship them. Like Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar, and we go up and tell you about Titus' father was made a god. So Titus was the son of God. While this story I was about, you know, Titus was made the son of God. And these Flavians who manipulated the writings of the Jews and started to pacify the Jews, created a man so passive that it never used to fight against the Roman Empire. As a matter of fact, him talk about give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Him, 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 him so passive. That was not like how the Jews them did see the Romans, you know. Because the Romans, as a matter of fact, when you hear the Colosseum in a, in a, in a, in a, in a room, where them, them used to say, them kill the Christian, them, you know. It's, it, you know, it's which Christian them that I kill. It's, it's not Christian them that kill you know. It's the Jews them. 
It's not because them was was Christian why they might kill them, you know. It's because these people was Jews who was hell bent and getting back them land where Rome devastate and mash down and destroy all them culture. So these people who was in them cultural expression and see for them Yahweh and whatsoever them see it and a wait for the Messiah to come. They was carried into this big place in a room, in the Colosseum, and they make game off of them. Meanwhile, them killing these people. Them elevate the empire, the Roman Empire, as a Christian empire. So, uh, Rome become a Christian empire under Constantine. Meanwhile, they was killing the so-called Jews, but it's not because they was Christian why they was killing them. They was killing them because they was fighting against Rome. The Jews was fighting against Rome. So meanwhile, they might kill the Jews. They so they might rework the writings of the Essenes and the agnostics in a in a in a Jerusalem in a all of these people who they take to the mountain, take to the hill and run with just like when Buster Monty go down a Monty go be here. And I decide to boy right now if Bogil can't hold if 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 the police station can't hold them Bogil by one so the rat them have to take to the hills and run up and down all over the place to save them life and save them culture. And the same way the Roman them start to hunt down these Jews to kill them, to take with them land, because them now was a superpower. They was like America now, superpower, they was like England at the time, superpower, they was like Greece. So Rome take over now. And them draw in the idea of what the, the, the Jews them used to have. And them designated Christianity. Now, if you find out both when we are talking about them, the Flavians, these people, this 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 family of Romans. This is a family of Romans. This family of Romans use their Roman culture, or what they would have called paganism ideas, and fashion the Jewish writings that they could have found, and use some elites, like oh, you yeah, have parliament now, who is really African people in a parliament, but them are work for the colonial master. Well, it seems they did have Jews at the time. Even though them was Jews, and we are talking about the people them who could have read and write you know, and study the language and things. Not like little fishermen, them who don't know Greek. But like Joseph Foss now, who, and even Paul, the man they get, get education, educated in a certain things. And just like how them say Paul used to kill Christians them and let them get converted. It's the same way this man who was even more educated than this brother when him, this Joseph was, was more educated than, 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 than Paul. Him work as a part of the elite till him get the name from this family and him help them to shape and fashion the whole idea has become so Roman that it's very hard to really detect the language because we don't know Greek. It's very hard to realize see, a lot of the things them that we hold fast to where it's literal. It's really, what do you call it? Allegory? Allegory is the word. Allegory, pardon me, pardon me, call the word, right? But as I said, I now read for the paper out of everything I come from. The allegory of this story have some serious meaning that is not historical, you know. It's not historical, but it's something to maintain fear, political fear in other people them who adapt this idea. And from that day until now, we can say that people who, who, who get embedded in this idea is so fearful of living Cause them feel say in dying is a better life, is a better way. Meanwhile, the political system that is Roman system 
And I refuse to say Babylon. I refuse to say Babylon because Babylon system, even though we, we say time and time again, but because Rasta has been using the language of Jewish Israel traditions over the years. They keep referring to Jewish language, Jewish ideas. What I say now is that Rome, Rome is even more stressful upon our thinking than Babylon. Rome, as a, as a metaphor, as a, as a, as a, as a simile, as whatever you want to call it, Rome is the perpetuator of the devastation on the planet right now. May I tell you? And this is edited by the Roman Catholic Church. I don't want to sound like a seven day. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I was like I said, I was 70, 70 they're supposed to love me out there you know, when I talk that way, you know. I tell you, 70 they're supposed to say, yes, Muta, you know what you say. But it's true. The Roman church has manipulated the ideas that was taught in by the Roman church has manipulated the ideas that was taught in Palestine. That was taught 2,000 years ago by the people them who was called the Essenes and the Nazarenes. Not to be mixed up with Nazareth. Nazarene have nothing to do with Nazareth because there was no city named Nazareth before Jesus. There was no city named Nazareth before Jesus. And since Jesus, them configure it, Jesus, you have named Nazareth and people that talk about them was on the way to Nazareth and Bethlehem and born or was he born in Nazareth or Bethlehem. These things is configuration of reality. There is no such thing. It's the Roman family. The Roman family of the Flavians with the help of Jewish intellectual elites that configure it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yes. This is what we call religious seminary. And I, and I challenge any guy up on the universe, what they call it, the, 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 the seminary, the theological seminary there, to tell me, say, what I say, no, I have no validity in history or in scholarly studies. I personally also know, as a man, never, never go to no university, never go to no theological seminary. I challenge any person, including not only the student, but the teacher. Because the teacher, the student, them, is not getting no understanding of the, 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 the historical reference point of where did this thing start? Why was it started? And oh, you know, a brethren used to call me as a world journalist, and I have to repeat him. I know he must have listened now. He said, You ask when, not maybe in the order, but it's, it's, four, it's four W. He say, When, where, why, and who. Not necessarily in that order. And I've been thinking on what he tell me, say, Keep calling me. I know I'm going to call me tonight, I do. Because I keep calling me and I have to, I have to heal him up. I don't remember if he tell me his name. He always said, I'm the whole journalist. He said, Muta, you said, you're not journalism. You must ask where, when, who, and why. Those four W need answers. Why the thing happened, when it happened, where it happened, and who make it happen. And I have kept that in my mind all the while. And I'm saying that in the theological seminary, especially in Jamaica, the when, where, why, who don't come up. Maybe just one, the who. But the when, when, at what point in history did Macho Mark, Luke, and John take center stage? In the whole scheme of Christianity. And if Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John 
is not the authors of this book, of this, these gospels, then who is the author? And when did it started? And why was it started? And where was it started? You see what I say? When did it start? Who started? Why did it start? And where was it started? These are the questions that we must ask. And then we must now go and dig and dig for the information. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Call 399 Yeah, this is the cutting edge on RFM. So, I get the youth them who they probably they are work for go up on them tablet now. I want you go look for the name I mentioned a while ago. Flavius. And you go look for Josephus. Flavius, the family of emperors. It's a family in a room. And Josephus right. He was a soldier actually. According to the information where we get he was a soldier and as we say him sell out the jewels them to the Roman them and them give him the name Flavius Josephus but they have Titus flavor flavor you know say flavor <laughs> they have flavor of Constantine it's a family and may I put it to the list of them say it's them people there manipulate the stories and put it together in a four book. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And give you a passive um, Jewish people that would appear that they never did a fight against Rome. Meanwhile, the Jews them was fighting against Rome because they want back them land. Because land is the basis of power. And them didn't know that. And then them come and devastate the whole of Jerusalem. Let me even send some people down there in a later days named the Knights Templar. The Knights Templar went to Jerusalem, kill off all some Islam Muslim too. Murder the Muslim them. And in turn, the same Pope them now, when them did not get too big for them, the, 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 them pants, the Pope sent out, how was the Pope name again? Some innocent Pope, I was Pope innocent. Anyway, I don't remember the name of the Pope, but him sent out that against them, to kill them off. Because they get too big and bold. It's like the Moors in Spain, in Granada, the Moors and the Jews them. After the Moors them give the Spain high culture, high culture. After a while, the King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella decide to so watch out. We don't want them black people here and the Jews them here because they're not really in line with the Pope. And anybody know where in line with the Pope is called heretics, heretics. So it's either no leave or no confirm. Just like the Jews them too. Because that them say to the Jews them, you know. In, 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 in Israel, you know. And in a Rome, them say, all right, we uno can't leave here, you know. Live in a Rome, but you want now. Uno have to worship Titus. Uno have to have a statue. Uno have to have some altar that recognize this deity, this Roman deity, in a all on the tabernacle and all on the place them. And you know, say, some people now have a bow certain way. And if you know bow, it's that you have to left the area or get killed. I just saw it go. Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Questions Protestants Can't Answer. Today's question is, who wrote the Gospel of Mark? And how do you know? I'm John Martinoni, president and founder of the Bible Christian Society, and today's question is focused on the idea of sola scriptura, which is Latin for the Bible alone, or the Bible only, which is one of the fundamental pillars of most of Protestantism, that we can know all we need to know about our Christian faith and about Christian morals by simply picking up the Bible and reading. So this question, who wrote the book of Mark, 
is a very important question because what it does is if all I need to know about Christianity I get from the Bible, if the Bible is my sole authority in matters of faith and morals, which it is for most Protestants, how can they answer that question? Because nowhere in the Bible does it tell us who wrote the book of Mark. This thing right here at the beginning of the Gospel of Mark in Scripture that says the Gospel according to Mark, that's not inspired Scripture. That's put in there by the publisher of the Bible. We don't have any originals from Mark that say, I, Mark, wrote this Gospel. Or that say, the Gospel according to Mark. So again, if you go by the Bible alone, how do you know that Mark wrote Mark? That somebody named Mark even wrote Mark? And how do you know that that Mark was inspired? Where in the Bible does it tell you who wrote the Gospel of Mark so that you may trust that it is inspired scripture? Because if you don't know who wrote it, how can you know it's inspired scripture? This is very, very important. So as Catholics, we need to ask everyone who believes in the Bible alone as their sole rule of faith, who wrote Mark? And if they say Mark, the the secretary of Peter and, and companion of Paul, the next question is, how do you know? Because I read Mark and there's nothing here that says, I, Mark, companion of Peter and Paul, wrote this gospel. Nothing in Luke that tells me. Nothing in Paul's letters that tells me who wrote the Gospel of Mark. So what authority are you relying on? It's not the scriptures to know who wrote Mark. So again, the question is, who wrote the Gospel of Mark? Ari of M. Thought-provoking. Always smoking. Lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. Yeah, so... We all left the theological seminary. <laughs> we all left the theological seminary at all. Okay. We well, want you look know, Grace Jones, you know. Yes, Grace Jones. But I tell you, no, sir. No, but it's not easy. <laughs> Why well, you look know, Grace Jones? Believe you me. Yes. Grace Jones, you know for party, boy. I May mean, I tell you. Big, big tune, you know. Corporate cannibals. Yeah, we'll give them something for use them tablet for deal with. You know, I mean, outside I just games and whatsoever. We'll give something for for search. So I'm going to tell you, say, all other things that we just tell you a while ago, something where the seminary, the theological seminary, should not tell the, the student them, but them don't tell them. So we tell you, no, no, and then it come like, say, me is a bad guy. Because me, I said all these things will sound weird. But as I say, go up on your, your, um, your tablet and look for Josephus, J-O-S-E-P, J-O-S-E-P-H-U-S. <laughs> hey, watch out. No one I feel over here because we listen up. We know what we are saying. Yeah, that's all right. And Flavius. And the Flavians, which is a family, the royal family of Rome. And we are declared, say, it's them, all of the thinking them what we have now, as it relates to our Christian upbringing. The Western mindset is set deep into the Roman understanding and idea of Jewish culture and Jewish understanding of deities and God, the invisible God and whatsoever the Jews them use. So, believe in her. Okay. So, I, I call that. All right, I'm going to take this. Yes. Yeah, blessed. Oh, blessed love, Mutabu. Ah, blessed Abba Zero. Oh, God. Well, God. my beloved, let me say to you, you are on point. Listen, the work of Josephus and the life of Fabius Josephus, written in 1914. And this gives you the history of the antiquities of the Jews and a history of the Jewish war and Christendom. Mm. Now, Muta, I'm listening to you and I'm saying, in the spirit of the moment, beloved, you are so on it. This book here, Muta Baruka... Which book? Which book? Tell me the book. Tell me the book. 
the book, the title of the book is called The Works of Josephus. Okay, okay. So Flavius, F-L-A-V-I-U-S. That is the name that was given to Josephus by the Romans. By the Romans. And the Romans, okay. the Romans who give him that name were the ruling class emperors named Flavius also. Precisely. Titus, but not, Corinthians. But now Muta, yeah, yeah. in the nature of Christendom, there would be no one from any seminary anywhere on the planet, not from the Vatican, to dispute what you're expressing right now. And if your listeners could reach out, and get this book, the yeah. works of Flavius Josephus. You think it online that them could have got scanned to it? Most I don't have to buy it. Well, Cause as a you, maybe never read it's it. online, but it's a it's a it's a work to have in, yes. in your library. All right, the work, the works it is of Josephus that is into ancient history. Yes, yes, yeah. It's very important to have a copy of this. And it's also expressing that it's written when it says life of Flavius Josephus written by himself. Yeah, it's, a, it's almost like an autobiography. Exactly. All right, exactly. so let me can ask you something. Tell me something that I never said in all the talk where it was. Tell me something about the whole, uh, the whole manipulation of Jewish writings by this Flavius um, um, well, Flavius um, family. Tell me something that I never say. Well, there is very little Muta that you have not <laughs> touched upon so to speak. Okay? So, when I'm listening to you, mm. I only call to express a certain sense of gratitude yeah, yeah, to your yeah. spirit and hoping that the intellectuals, wherever they are, within Christendom, in the universities, yes. wherever they are, yeah. that they're listening, and just maybe that they could come to a place of questioning uh, self yeah. once again. Yeah, and you know, I want to give thanks to my mother right you now, you know, at this point in time, you know, you know. Well, she is worthy it, 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 to it be It is my mother that gave moment. me this impetus and this beginning of you you see i always say if you if you want to understand african history you have to understand european history you, well, understand? Muta, you know the book uh stolen legacy yes uh, that is that is the book that influenced out a poor memory writing in teeth in legacy so now stolen legacy tells you mm. study greece Yes, yes. And if you study Greece, yes, then you will know truly the gift of Africa, Africa. to the planet. I agree with you, brethren. I agree. You with see, you. my beloved, I love you more than Aki. <laughs> yeah. My beloved, <laughs> the love. I, 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 I salute you from the sole of your feet to the crown of your head. Bless when you God. hold up your hands, Muta Baruka, from your fingertips, yes. may you affect even inanimate objects for the better good. All right, give thanks, Bridget. My beloved. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Fresh, 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 With them tablets. It's power. Then we'll go and talk. We'll tell your brother. We're going to play that by the brother man there, you know, Tim Wise. If we know then what we know now, what a difference it would make in the scheme of things. And say until the philosophy that all one race superior and the other inferior, until the color of a man's skin is of no significance than the color of it. You know, his manager to say at the end of that speech, him say, until that day, 
Until that day, we Africans will fight if it is necessary. Because we are confident in the victory of good over evil. So we have to find out what is that philosophy. I know. 